recording on all of the news uh, stations and on all of the platforms and on all of the interwebs. So, interrupting me. <laughs> Thank you for coming and watching the Broski Doodles podcast. As always, your boy Kiko Flo, Kiko Cervantes, here with you. It doesn't matter if I'm unemployed, if I got a job, if I'm working at Taco Bell. I'm going to make those tacos and be right here after. Shit. All right? We got a few people joining us from fucking what used to be Trump's America. <laughs> Trump's and now, America. <laughs> and now the, the Russian gulags. Uh, we got my boy, <laughs> Big John, Yo, on the other side of the pond. What I do, DJ BJ, you already know. And our boy Fear, known as DJ AJ. In the, you know, no, um, the corp Turk, corpse Turk, corpse techno rooms. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Uh, learned English very recently. So, well, today we have a few topics. I want to start off right now because we're talking off air, right in the green room, about a little experience me and, and, and Fear had. Uh, for people that don't know, Fear is my cousin. And, and well, you know. One of the things that we used to do when we were younger uh, and more, you know, exquisite and fresh to the taste, we would go to like Disney, Universal Studios with the family, you know, and just just have a fun time. And we recently had a little escapade where about what, like a, about a year ago, Adrian? A little more than a year. Yeah. last In, uh, in, in December of last December. We went to... So we went to like Disney and Universal and we stayed at a magical place that I booked, um, you know, with the loins of my work. Great deal. It was a great deal. It was a great deal. Um, And the place, the place's name is very close to Mar-a-Lago, but the experience was very far from it. It was like, (laughs) it was like, it was like if you were put in a 1970s motel and then stayed like that for 40 years uh could, could you express a bit uh fear what were some of the of the details of this hotel that made it eerie to the fucking <laughs> taste besides the drug dealers in the parking lot <laughs> yeah besides the drug dealing and the pimping in the parking lot <laughs> the permanent guests that stayed at the, at the hotel that looked like they've been living there since the 70s <laughs> They just haven't been able to be kicked out because they have a, what is it called, tenure? Oh. <laughs> At the motel. At the motel. <laughs> like, they didn't, they didn't buy the, the, the room. They, sorry, they didn't rent the room. They, they bought it. <laughs> yeah, they've been so long. They have so much stake in it. They just, yeah, you, you stay there. Like, the, the type of people that are there permanently, you could tell the quality of people that they're in because this place for them, they bought a resort. They get a week, <laughs> a year. Uh, fear, if you could just either put the volume up or put the, I think the volume. Or, or the mic closer. Yeah. Yeah, or the mic closer just because we hear you very low. Um, but yeah, um, uh, BJ, this thing had, bro, like, like it had this weird older guy walking around all the time. Like, like he seemed like he was the owner, right? Right, and, and he would just walk around, and it was Christmas time. So they grabbed one of the motel rooms, mm-hmm. and they they decorated it as if it was Santa's room. What and and just for you, for you to get an idea, this is a typical motel in Orlando. When you go and you know, I, I'm not talking about you got money and you're staying at fucking you know Disney's. You know what was one of the hotels? Fear. Yeah, yeah. Like the Polynesian or something. Yeah, the yeah. Polynesian or the fucking you know the wacky that- ducky. The, the, Walt the, Di- the Walt Disney Resort, yeah. The Walt Disney Resort, right. If you don't got the money for that, which, you know, some of us don't, uh, yeah. haven't had it at all times of our lives. I mean, some, some of us have gone there, you know, I mean, I've seen things, I've seen places, I know people, right. important people. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, at times, you have to go to the, you know, it's a typical, like, Las Vegas, 1970s motel that stayed in the outskirts of Las Vegas, you know, so it's like... You have like this rings of, a, of of rooms, and then in the middle is a pool, but like it's very non-private. Like there's a door, and then the community of people are there, and the pool's there. So like if you open the curtains, people from outside see it. Like it's a fucking you know fishbowl. <clears throat> so they make they decorated it pretty nice with like Santa Claus and Mrs. Santa Claus is sleeping there. So we're just passing by, you know, looking at it. 
Uh, this was like very riff raff entertainment, in, in my, <laughs> my, my opinion, humble opinion. Uh, did they did they charge uh, you for this amenity? I don't know. This was actually complimentary. All, all included. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the perks of staying there. They highlighted on the website. <laughs> they had to check out our, our Winter Wonderland. <laughs> um, on the brochure, it says uh, complimentary visit to Santa Claus Nest. <laughs> so while we were looking at this, bro, this uh-huh. is like that old guy that was walking around walking stands around. like next to us, and, and he's just like, quite a beautiful room they did here, right? I mean, it is. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I I heard the I heard the the, the care keepers. You know, uh, early this morning organized it all and made it really. I mean, it's really nice. You know, kind of like making it look like oh, I'm just casually coming here and this is my opinion of it. But it really seemed like he was the owner and was trying to push that narrative. <laughs> <laughs> like he wanted to be congratulated for all the work. <laughs> very very yeah, nice job it, they did with the lights. Right? It looks like it took a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of sweat and tears went into it. Looks like a lot of work, right? I, I, I mean, whoever least, did that? At, at least fourteen hours of work. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just guessing, just based on how guessing. it looks. <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, who's counting? You know, it's Santa Claus. But you know that it was, and it was very like, oh, this is pretty. But at the same time, dude, it just felt like at any moment somebody was gonna get murdered at that place. Oh, <laughs> like Mrs. Santa Claus just gets up from there. He's drunk. As shit. Dude, like we, we we kept going to. I kept calling the desk because they needed to like either do the beds or some shit, and they would just say like, "Yeah, we're going," and then they would never come. <laughs> and every time I called them, they would say. And then I went to the to the to the desk. The lady that was there looked like she was Latin, ha- had a tattoo on her neck, so that oh made it very. Oh my god! She was no, she was very approachable, and I was like. <laughs> I was like, hey, I have an issue. I've been calling since yesterday, you know? I, I, I was very Karen-ish, right? I was like, I've been calling. I've been calling to, for the beds to be made. <laughs> you left me no choice. <laughs> you left me no choice. I want to speak with a regional manager. And, and she looked at me in my face and she said like, yeah, 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 we're going to go soon. Like she's been telling me on the phone. Oh, my God. And the look she gave me was like, you're going to leave because... I could care less about your shitty fucking, um, you know, Orlando getaway, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, I have to live in this touristy piece of shit place, right? <laughs> All year round, you get to come for a week, right? To jerk off in fucking, you know, whatever, uh, Disney downtown, downtown uh-huh. Disney, right? And buy o- overpriced beer, um... But I have to live in this fucking piece of shit place. So no, no, no. You're not going to come at me with that fucking attitude, okay? <laughs> and I said, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> and, uh, but I mean, it was a great experience here at, at, at this she, hotel. She's probably, she's probably calling the guy to go clean the room. And he's just like, <laughs> like ending the call. <laughs> and he's just talking to the random people about the room. Like the, the, the Santa Claus room. It's probably that guy that has to clean your room and he's just not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no no I think that's the owner <laughs> and he was just very proud of very proud of his thing but in any case um, it seems like uh, you know some places just stay in the past but for some reason this place kept being rented because everything's so overpriced in Orlando when you tourist wise mm-hmm. that if you only got like a hundred bucks per night this is what you get you get a fucking right. You got a place where, you know, it's pretty much a... You uh, you get a place where you might get murdered. Yeah, you might get murdered, but you are getting it on the low. Which I still think 100 bucks per night, that's not cheap. That's not, no. 100 bucks per night, it's not cheap. But Yeah, we went in high season, though. It wasn't high season? Yeah, I mean, pretty much we just... I'll be honest with you, like, I rented this out of the pictures that I saw. (laughs) They had the the pictures from the 70s. As soon as yeah. they first oh cut the ribbon. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, there was this guy on the brochure that had a Regan shirt. That should have given me a, an idea. <laughs> it said, like, Regan 84 or some shit. <laughs> that's not, I don't know. That's, that's not the year. Bad joke. So, I mean, oh, like. I'll scratch that. You, you probably could have taken a, a DeLorean to get out of there or some shit, you know? Some shit. <laughs> I'm surprised Dude. you didn't have one on display. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, recently I was reading this shit about that DeLorean guy. Um, you know, okay, so the guy 
let me just search because I had the news thing here. Yeah, so this guy's called it's called John DeLorean, right? And he sort of came up in this is crazy, dude. Because no, I don't know if people know this story. This guy actually they did like ten thousand units of this car, and then he for like he couldn't make ends meet because making the car was like very expensive because of mm-hmm. you know how it was constructed. So to pay bills and shit, he like went to do some drug deal for two hundred kilos of cocaine. And then it got caught. But actually, he was framed by the FBI, who was the one that called him to do the deal. It was some weird shit. Like, there's a movie about it with um, Alec Baldwin. I want to see it. But uh, that guy's story is pretty cool, man. Because that car was epic. And, you know, it came out of nowhere. Uh, And you would never think that that guy went bankrupt and then tried to do a drug deal to, to come up. But now, would um, the car still be epic if it wasn't sensationalized by the Back to the Future franchise? Mm. Like, if the Back to the Future chose a different car, as opposed to the DeLorean, would it still be, like, as epic as people think it is? I mean, of course or, not. Yeah. But... I mean, that's the only way we know about the car, right? I mean, I would right. have known about the DeLorean if it wasn't for the movie. Right. I haven't even seen the movie. I don't know about But then car. again... <laughs> but I know DeLorean. <laughs> but but it goes hand in hand because that movie wouldn't have been what it was without the DeLorean. Maybe? Or or, mm-hmm. or Michael J. Fox was carrying that shit regardless. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean in the eighties for a door like a car door to open up as opposed to to the side, that was pretty innovative and new. But then he didn't think about parking spaces. <laughs> oh, because of- like the yeah 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 but are you sp- are you sure because maybe it's even easier because it, it goes up instead of sideways no they, they go sideways up is the ferrari the one that goes like that you no know, but, but but i think it went like this so it never actually it opens like a the, bat no yeah but like it, the, it, the doors open but they they have they need some extra room no i think you're wrong check it out that's I the w- whole reason why people stop buying it that's because that. the doors would, wouldn't, would, would, it's like, if you park two cars, yeah, <clears throat> if you park two cars next to each other, that's it. You're, you're stuck. Let me check. I'm Have seeing here, through the I'm seeing a picture time. of the DeLorean, and it, uh, if you, sorry for a picture of the DeLorean without closing the fucking squad cast, and it doesn't seem like it. What I want to do, the doors are open, it seems like it's sort of the same line. It seems like it would be easier because when you open a car door, you actually do need space for the car door. Now, now if if you drive into the parking spot with the co- with the doors open, <laughs> that, that's different. No, dude, <laughs> no, dude. I think you're like tripping hard on like on some how wide it is. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Man. We, we we can get one for the brusky doodles. Yeah, maybe it doesn't look like it goes further than the frame of the car. Right. Seems like to me. <laughs> but you know what's funny? Like how how sure fucking uh, John said he's like no no bro. I mean that's why people stop buying it. I mean in 1981 the, the decline of it was uh, strictly due to and he, dude. You just made that shit up. Like <laughs> look, bro. I'm gonna I, look li- literally. I'm gonna <laughs> okay, uh, I put the, the link uh-huh. on the on the keep so you can see the door opening and closing. Okay, you put like a YouTube video. I can, I can put this shit. Despite okay, the goes, car being a why? commercial flop, at no, first, I mean, it's called actually cool status, more than thirty okay. grand. John, would you would you go like half on half on me? Like it opens, but it does go a little bit farther than the frame, but very little. Like not even as much as a normal car would have to go to open up a door. I I want to say that it goes enough. So that if the, if the car is parked next to it, it can't open. Mm, okay. All right. So like, yeah, it, it could be little. It could be it could be significant, but it's enough so that if there's a car parked next to it, it won't open. Okay. Do you like the car? It looks nice. It looks cool. I, I would I would definitely have it for fun, but not as a daily driver or something like that. Even in even in the eighties, like it's like a it's like a toy car like a. Yeah. Those um those T those T cars the yeah like the Raptor the, or something like that 
Rap, uh, I don't know about that, but the T the T model is a Ford T. Bro, oh my God! No, the slingshots, <laughs> the slingshots, the, one that there you the go. Batmobiles. Yeah, the top off. That, that's that's what I'm talking about. Oh, the Batmobile. Yeah, those that are the ones that you rent when you come to Miami. Me. Now, would you get the DeLorean or the Batmobile? Mm, I, I'll get the DeLorean. That's just more my attitude. But I do uh -huh. think the Batmobile is more elegant. Now, what if I said they were, they were both fully functional? Does that Meaning mean like, like the Batmobile? The DeLorean like... could go... The DeLorean could go and travel in time. Okay. All right. And the, and the Batmobile has all the gadgets, like the, Man, fuck the, the, the gadgets. missiles and the... <laughs> if I had the DeLorean, I'll go like a thousand years in the future. But but listen, listen. The DeLorean, you have to have the, the, the charge to go there and come back. You have to have a, a lightning strike at a certain time. Like all the same conditions that the DeLorean in, that, in the movie okay. versus the same conditions in the Batman movie, I guess. That's true. And, Okay, that's actually an interesting Well, I would watch there. the movie first and then probably pick the DeLorean. <laughs> just because yeah, I'm not going to be out there fighting crime and shit. Like. The, fact, <laughs> yeah, the fact that you haven't watched the movies is a bit concerning to me. But, all right, fuck the DeLorean. Uh -huh. I want to talk to you about some actual real issues. Cause like some real stuff. Yeah, like real stuff. You guys have been just <laughs> toying around here with bullshit. And I'm, Literally. And I'm talking about the transgender shark situation that's going on i mean specifically in the caspian sea where mm -hmm. they're being sexually abused by the by the fishermen of the of the near coast um and you know the worst part of it is like the animal activist groups aren't even like pushing forward on this because i mean like they kind of say like if this if the shark has decided to be transgender then it should have like it, sh it should be its own entity and decide whatever it wants to do. But I right, feel right. as if like the fishermen aren't getting consent. Right, like no, it's a, it's a very concerning issue. Uh, Adrian, did you read the article about that? No, no. We send, we no. Send it the, sounds send like, the... so the shark has, since it can make the choice whether or not it wants to be a certain gender, it has <laughs> consent. Crazy, but it's, it's, it's really... Yeah, it's, it's actually not transgender, it's, it's intersex. So it, it could have both. But it, so, it picks and chooses what it wants to be at any given time. I mean, that we, I, we can't speak to the sharks as of yet, but it does seem yeah. like they... Uh, I, I still don't know if to determine if it's a he or a she or a they. Do, how, how do we, you know, how do we I mean, address I, I would, the, I would, the shark? I wouldn't even dare trying to address a sex because that's something that I would give the sharks to do when they're 18. Um, when they're 18. Oh. 18. In, in shark years or in human years? I don't know if shark years have shark years, but uh, in human, whatever mm -hmm. the fuck we are. Don't try to don't try to be funny on my podcast. Uh, <laughs> don't don't try. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, just do. <laughs> no, but uh, to answer your question, fear because I was a bit hesitant to believe the stories. Like the sharks apparently do choose what they want to be, <laughs> but the mm -hmm. fishermen don't give a fuck, you know. <laughs> They abuse them anyways. <laughs> but they are consenting to it, right? It's not rape because... Since I, I mean, they're just getting caught. And then whether whether they like it or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of, the, some, of the, some of the sharks like it, but some of them don't. I mean, like, if you're going to cut them up and use them for soup, is it that bad if you fuck them before? Like, Where do you draw the line, right? Like, Or is it inhumane because the last thing they see before dying, you know, is your... You know, whatever, like disease infested penis. Like, yeah, you're gonna kill me anyway. Why humiliate me? <laughs> yeah, stick like, your dick in my yeah, blow. Put lipstick on my, you know, like also. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in any case, that's something that, that that the Brosky Doodles are very tight with. We're gonna continue <laughs> to. <laughs> we need to we need to we need to fight for the right of are we fighting for the right of the fisherman or, or the right of the of the shark? <laughs> <laughs> well for the next one we can have a debate. I'm a, I'm team shark, team fisherman. human. <laughs> oh damn. Um so yeah, uh basically these are the causes that you like end up finding in, in, in the internet when you're unemployed or you're, you know, about you're to be. about to be, you know, <laughs> it's, to be. It's, in, it's in my case, you know, 
<laughs> but like, uh, has the internet gone too far when when they started doing stuff like this? Yeah, I mean, like when, when when we have to defend the transgender rights of sharks, may, maybe the masculine doses have have gone up too much, you know, and. <laughs> We need to like rethink what we're actually doing. With how, how does one even find out about this? Is a fisherman just telling on other fishermen? I I think we do have some woke fishermen. Mm. Like, I don't like that, what's going on here. I don't. I never that, get a shark to fuck. You guys keep them on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think most of the time <laughs> it would be like a salty fisherman that never got the punani. Mm. You know, like You're taking all the sharks. Or, so, so that, or, or, so then he starts like, you know, it's like you know those like extreme feminists that are mm. always like, yeah, 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 power to the women because they never get pussy and they're trying to get some. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I think it was probably one of those fishermen that went for the BJ as opposed to the, like going straight for the for the punani. Okay. And got bit off, and he's like, he's salty about that. Yeah, I mean, so, like with the sharks, you gotta be aggressive about it. You know, you, mm. you can't do like, you know, one, two, three dates, you know, <laughs> fish dinner. Like, you got to go at it. Well, dude, it like, <laughs> dude, this is crazy. Talking about going at it. There's this thing, dude. <laughs> no, no, no. This is crazy. This is crazy. Talk to me. The, there's this, uh, I'm, I'm giving you the link on the keep. It's, it's one of the ones that you will see there. It's in Spanish, but it's about uh, insects, right? And this is uh, the mantis. Wow. And when the guy goes and has sex with the lady mantis, after they have sex, she fucking eats him and rim just eats the, the head, like decapitates him. Mm-hmm. So Sounds about right. And, and so they were saying like some of the men have gotten a strategy where they, they, they fight, they fight the, the, the lady first and it kind of shows like, hey, bitch, like, fuck you. Like, I, I can throw hands, right? Yeah. No, like, he literally fucks her up. Yeah, he does. Like, he, he hurts her. He asserts his dominance. They fuck. Asserts <laughs> dominance. And then he does a square. They fuck. And then, in most cases, she ends up eating him after. So, it's just like, if you beat me up, well... We can fuck before I fucking murder you. So like a rope a dope strategy. She gets the male tired <laughs> from the fighting and the fucking, and then she's like, "All right, now I'm a feast." Like imagine I'm a serial murderer like that, like this lady that kills men, and but she gets horny by having a man like physically abuse her, right? And then like if you fuck me up badly enough, then you're worthy of fucking me, and then I'm gonna blow your fucking brains off anyways, like. Some like scary shit, like eerie type movie. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get. It's this gonna be on Netflix soon. Up. You'll see. <laughs> now, um, Kiko, is my understanding based off the article you sent me that um, when the male is successful in the fight, there's a 66 percent chance that he'll survive, so he won't die. Like that's the whole point of the fighting is for that he doesn't die, so he can keep fucking up other yeah, but, it, and but if, you, if you read lower in the article this might be a bit contradictory but he said that even the ones that win the fight and fuck like half of them still get like decapitated right right no 66 percent no 66 percent make it out the other 33 percent still 66 percent out of the ones that win the fights out of the ones that win the fight yeah 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 so definitely yeah, the one, definitely and, i mean and, the, only, mm -hmm. and and only 50 percent of the of the mantis are fighting the other 50 percent are just fucking they're not. They're not doing the, the pre-fight, and then they, they don't realize. Oh shit! I'm fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the, like finish, the true alpha ones finish. that are like, all right, I'm gonna fight before because I know what goes down. I know how you right. did my cousin. It's. it's <laughs> I saw that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I seen it. I seen it with my eyes. <laughs> I see how you did my fucking cousin Jose. <laughs> And then you come in with them um, hands, like, like you know what I mean, like fucking so, Poirier so, and fucking McGregor, just pop, 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 pop. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> so uh, are we are we seeing like evidence of evolution in this in this case? I mean, I'm just like an I'm evolutionary. See, I, thing? I'm seeing an evolution of how fucking toxic this bitch can be. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're seeing a, an evolution of the alpha male, <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, or the beta bitch, more like. Oh. A, <laughs> No, psychopathic it, it, female. I, I I just found it weird. Like, well, 
I mean, ever since I've known about praying mantis, I've always known about them eating their 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 mate, always. Just the same thing with the with the black widow. Yeah, that was what I was about to say. That that happens with the black widow too, and it, and it seems that evolutionary wise, from the explanations that I've been able to get in the science community, is that the the act of eating the men after procreating gives enough nutrients to the mom to sort of have the offsprings. So it's like a and sacrificial if you really think about it, Yeah, if you, right. if you really think about it, isn't that how life works? It's just that you don't die immediately. You first lose your hair and little by little you start, you know, you get like heart disease and then... You pay child support your whole life. Yeah, pay child support and then mm -hmm. you end up fucking having a heart attack on a Hooters in fucking Gainesville. <laughs> <laughs> on a mountain of blow. <laughs> that, sounded, no, that, that sounded oddly specific, Kiko. Yeah, it's been fucking rough. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, I mean, I'm, I hey, by the way, I'm like super like women like uh, you know <laughs> supporter. He has, to, he has to clarify. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, in in, in the context of the mantis, she's a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Not again! You know, oh, man. you think that oh, the male man. willingly die? Knowing that they're gonna be fed uh, to their offspring, or there's like some trick that she's pulling out out of nowhere. Oh man, uh, do you, do you really believe that he knows that he's like he's conscious enough to understand that he's providing nutrients for his offspring? I mean, instinctively, animals are pretty impressive on like how they, why they would, why they do certain things. And, and they don't even have the intelligence to like process those actions, but instinctively they give they into just it. Like do. the betas that just don't fight, they they know. <laughs> nah, I ain't mad enough to fuck with you. <laughs> they're like fuck this. I'm up in a YouTube channel. I'm in chills. I jerk off. I that, need this bitch. That, <laughs> <laughs> or, or I mean, that goes that goes to say like how how powerful the pussy is because like he's like. Dude, I know I'm gonna fucking die, but I need to hit this shit. I mean, <laughs> I mean even is the last one. Time's almost yeah. up. <laughs> I mean, you get on that Instagram, some man will fucking sign I that deal. <laughs> They're like, if I could get that, fuck Oof. it. They're like, fuck it. They're like, even even if I die, like, can I fuck it twice? And then, <laughs> all right, all right, fuck it. <laughs> like, fuck it, man. I've been in AT and T for fucking eight years now. I'm not going anywhere. Fuck it. That, that that brings another question. You you are come up with the like okay so the, you approach a girl and she's literally like eleven. She's not even a ten. She's an eleven, badass fuck. And she takes you to her room, and you see like the heads of all the guys <laughs> that she's fucked. <laughs> and she's like, look, I, I, and she's like, they call me the pray, <laughs> they call me the praying mantis, bitch. <laughs> Come and suck them up. Would you, would, you, would, you, would you still fuck? I'll be like, I'll be like, ah, I need to go get some rubbers on the gas station and, <laughs> and a great meat Dutch. You want an Arizona iced tea? I'll be right back. Uh, John, get me the let, fuck out of here. <laughs> and like, let, me, let me at least set the mood right. You know, like, let me put some candles out and shit. This is going to be the last one. Let's make, it, let's make it the best one. How about that? What if she asks you to fight? And if you win the fight, she won't kill you. Mm. Like some Ronda Rousey shit. Like, All right, pussy, I, let's go. I, I, I'd be down for that. I mean, Amanda Nunez. Come on, bitch. Pa -pa. Pa -pa -pa. Fucking bitch. I hope you don't fuck like you fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. <laughs> like you're there with like a like a broken arm and shit. She's like, go pump it up, motherfucker. <laughs> I can't, I can't get it off. I'm sorry. <laughs> My leg's broken. <laughs> I'm about to break that dick. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh, bro. BJ's into, <laughs> BJ's into character. <laughs> His voice scared oh, me. Oh, man. That was hilarious. That was funny. Um, So, yeah. So, enough for the praying mantis. But, yeah. So, a little thing to mm -hmm. learn there. Um, I was listening... I don't know if Fear listens to him as well, but I like uh, this guy, comedian Tim Dillon. He has a pretty cool podcast where he talks about crazy shit. He's funny. And he was talking about how, like, um, like he has, like, somebody toxic in his life, his aunt, 
that oh my God. <laughs> dude like <laughs> <laughs> this guy you know he he uh, like he, like this guy is, he's gay but you wouldn't even know he's gay because he just doesn't show it like that but I mean who mm-hmm. cares it doesn't that doesn't doesn't make him more doesn't matter right right but matter. he it's important for the context because it was his birthday a few days ago and he put on Instagram like a like an old picture of him with no shirt and he said like come pig and so I don't know that with the fact that he's gay like like whatever the, like it was just like a trolling thing right and like uh-huh. what one of his aunts that he doesn't like that he's talked about in the past like you know like that that family that certain family members that you're like yo fuck this wrote like how sad that this is the legacy that you that you bring to your grand <laughs> grandpa or some shit like that and dude this guy just trolled oh for God. 20 minutes on his aunt on the podcast um and but you, you have to watch that like that's I, I think it was a really funny thing but what, the reason why I say that is because he was talking about how, like, these toxic people in life that you might think at times, like, man, I hope you die soon, right? For some <laughs> reason, they're the ones that end up living the most, right? Like, like, yerba mala, nunca muere, you know, like... Like the longest? The, like the bad week. Yeah. You know, whatever. The, the, what would be the English... Fucking yeah. uh, salil, salil, the, soliloquy for that shit. I, I, I guess uh, the bad weed never dies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, and, and he, he was saying, like, maybe it's because, like, people that are, are, like, pieces of shit that don't care about consequences just don't care about shit. So because they don't care about things, nothing stresses them. Like, rational people are stressed all the time because we're trying to, like, okay, fuck, I need to do this. I need to take care of this. Like, responsibilities bring stress mm-hmm. but when you don't care about anything you're just a fucking low life loser you don't care so you don't live stress you just and it kind of clicked on me i mean i don't know if this is like exactly like that but haven't you had people in your life that you know are just fucking low life losers and and if you think about it that they, they're so carefree it's almost a, a bit too envy like like damn dog your, your life is so fucked and you're just chilling and my life is somewhat fucked and i'm here like fucking you know stressing the fuck uh, out yeah so yeah I'm, I'm, you think there's some correlation taking, to ta- that taking anti-anxiety pills and shit yeah um i mean stress-free like when you're saying that they don't care about anything because like i'm i'm thinking about like like a monk a monk no, doesn't no, I, don't, no. I wouldn't necessarily consider him like a low-life no, that, person that's, but he does, that's he's not at all care, the profile that i'm that I'm putting like in. Res- you're talking about the person like that, responsibility. that does. You're talking about the people that, that do shit without thinking how uh, like any consequences of whatever they do. Right, like at this stage of life, if you got a if you got a, a homeboy, and it, the fact that like the profile of this person is somebody that still says homeboy, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> this guy's the type of guy. Like if you get somebody to still send you a text or some shit saying yo, hey yo, you want to go five on it and go to the park and burn one, like. Maybe that guy doesn't give a fuck about shit. Like, like he's like he's thirty five, forty, and then calling you to to put five yeah, down. Yeah, it. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to say like, like that's not something specifically that I would judge against. Right. But you, you know what I'm talking about? Like the profile of someone that just doesn't do shit and just calls calls you like at eleven a.m. on a Tuesday. Like, dog, I'm fucking working, bro. It's like, oh, dog, I, I thought I thought you wanted to match or some shit. Like, <laughs> um. And I mean, I don't want to sort of make you guys feel any way because I know you're both unemployed. So it's not not, not to say that you are those homeboys. You see but, that bunk uh, bed? I got responsibilities. <laughs> she, she, I, I got time to match, nor the money. <laughs> so you think that no, that you carefree think- lifestyle allows you or the lack of stress makes, you li- makes those type of people live longer? Well, I mean, that's the, the hypothesis here. I mean, not, not that it's uh, backed by any, like, science. Well, unless it backfires that they're not responsible enough to take care of their own, uh, take care of themselves. They don't eat right. They don't take their medication if they're sick. So uh, it gets true. to the point where it becomes detrimental to their health. Right. Where they literally don't care. Right, right, right. More prone to but I mean, I guess, I guess, shit. I guess, more than a general thing, it's just more like an anecdotal thing of like people that you've met in your life that you're like, how this motherfucker just keeps living. 
<laughs> I mean, maybe not us, like people in our age group, but like, like I, I know people like back in Venezuela where we used to drink like at a liquor store, you know, very third world type shit. And there would be this old guy that used to be my dad's friend, but was a lot older than my dad and was just a piece of shit, like low, like, I don't want to say, like just somebody just, just always drinking, just not doing anything. And then he's like, yeah, I'm 98 and shit. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, how do you get here like that? And he's like, oh, because you, you can never, you never get. How you turn 98 and you're drinking every day? Yeah. <laughs> and you don't see your. And not just, not just like, a, like a light drinking, like, a, like getting plastered type Whole shit. bottles to the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. You know those Latin American people, like, just uh, like very local people that just have this, you know, s- s- body system that just. Now, the people that, I mean, I've seen those cases, but now imagine that same person, the 98 year old that's been drinking for the, heavily for the rest of the, for the whole of his life. Now take, take away the liquor and see how, how he starts acting. You mean he starts getting wild? Like t- right. He starts getting wild. He starts getting like, you know, like it's, it's gotten to the point where he's, he's created a dependency on that liquor. And now do you take it away and he starts like shivering and he's shaking and he's like fucking, you know, like breaking down. Because now that's like his fuel. That's like he doesn't even need to eat. He just fucking drinks. Right, but, but so you're saying it would be actually worse to take it off. To take it to take it away. Yeah, um, I think they they had found a, an an old man that had been living. Uh, he was homeless for I want to say like twenty plus years or some shit, and he was really really dirty, and like he like covered in in dirt, and um. And then the, the, the scientists, when they started seeing him, he was full of, like, bacteria, fungus, all over his body. <laughs> to the point where the, 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 the scientists told him, do not give him a bath. Do not try to clean him. Because <laughs> he's his own ecosystem. The, the, that, bacteria, that bacteria is protecting him from other ailments. So if he were, if he were to clean his body and shit, he would die from the next, whatever the fuck, next invade, try to invade his body. Because of all this dirt and and shit all around him that was protecting him, that was like forming a shield around him. At this him point, he's a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Human preacher dish. There. <laughs> this guy was becoming like the 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 rock in the four Fantastic, <laughs> the Fantastic Four, the the thing. The thing yeah. <laughs> he's covered in bacteria. You can shoot his bacteria at, at foes. <laughs> he you fucking take off his mask, he, spit he, in he, your he, face. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he could survive a nuclear blast and shit. <laughs> He's like the fucking cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hey, no, but, but yeah, do bro. you think? I mean, all of us here like are of Latin descent. Some have mm-hmm. a bit more contact with the Latin world than others, but don't you think like people that are like very like old school, like that mm-hmm. lived in those like. Uh, um, you know, in the fields and shit, they're just like mm-hmm. just stronger people. Like, like I feel like a bitch next to like guys like that, like fucking ninety eight year olds, and they're fucking like just cutting the field and like just working the fucking the mills. I don't know if that's a thing. Like they just, you the know, mills. they're cutting mills. <laughs> I've heard mills <laughs> when they refer to hard work. <laughs> I'm gonna use it and run with it. I've heard mills. <laughs> I've heard uh, tools. Uh, plowing sounds like a thing that they do <laughs> but you no know, do you think like you know like i don't know do you think that i think back in the day like when well, i'm back in the day i'm not that fucking old but like when i lived in venezuela i saw people like that when i we go in the fucking rural mm-hmm. mid of the country you'd see like mm-hmm. and i don't know if if you uh bj have seen this like I and mean, I know I know you have Dominican family and Colombian family, so mm-hmm. I, I haven't seen it in the Colombian family, but I've definitely seen it in the Dominican family where um my my grandpa, he was like ninety two, ninety three, and he to this day he's still working a field and shit, you know? And um it's impressive to see him I mean he walks around slow, obviously, but but yeah, and then they tell they tell me that in in, in his heyday, um he would um there there was once uh, uh, like a raging bull headed towards one of his family members or some shit and he, that nigga just like <laughs> stopped him and, the and wrestled them down I'm like what the fuck 
But my, and, and mind you, my grandpa now he's he's taller than me. He's like six three or six four. Well, he grew. And back he grew then he was later. Like, no, he he shrunk. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, he shrunk. No, he was taller. He like yeah yeah because with, with age you shrink. So he was like six five six six at at the time. She reminds me of dodgeball and, and grabbing the bull by the horn. Fighter, <laughs> <laughs> literally and figuratively. All right. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if he'd, if he'd repeat that. Uh, but I mean, um, I, I, when I was talking about this, I didn't know you had such a great example for it. Well, actually, <laughs> my dad, yeah, yeah, yeah. my grandpa, mm -hmm. they call him the bullfighter. And, and then, and then, when when he was young, his dad, uh, like he was like three or four. Um, <laughs> his dad wrestled out well. Fucking <laughs> grabbed him by the tail. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that caught Moby Dick. Uh, no, um, uh, what is it? Uh, um, when he was young, one of his like brothers had taken like a quarter or like a nickel or some shit. Because back then, a quarter or nickel was was money. But now, whatever. Okay, so he took a quarter or nickel without telling his dad. So the dad to teach uh, my grandpa's dad to teach my his brother a lesson. Um, literally just picked him up by his neck and just held him for like 30 seconds like just in the air like that okay and he was like choking he was like dying He's like oh get him out like, let, let him go let him go <laughs> he's like no 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 he has to learn never again <laughs> did he okay. take anything without asking <laughs> okay that's Holy uh, shit. i mean a learning experience but but he, he, I, I think he did the, the lion the, king on his ass <laughs> <laughs> the the farm strength i i call it like the the farm strength uh that people acquire from uh obviously intense labor uh, picking up sacks of like beans or sacks of coffee, which you know, think you know, like a, a coffee bean, how much could that weigh? But imagine like a whole on like a 50 pound or 100 pound sack, and you're doing that 100, 200 times a day for for the whole year and for years. So, like, you're, you're not even working out, and you already have this pre nate, like pre strength. Bro. Of, of of picking up 50 100 and just walking a couple miles or some shit because everything was miles and nothing was like there was no roads back then and yeah their muscles don't really they don't experience atrophy they like they stay consistently strong throughout their whole life and i'm, I'm sure they're also mentally strong too right like they're not they're not worried um, about existentialism like oh my god what's my life purpose and all this bullshit like they're <laughs> like i need to wake up i need to work i need to feed myself because uh, for because tomorrow. they don't have fucking this much fucking free time, bro. Right. right. <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> they don't got, they don't got time I, to be doing this mariquera aquí, golo. This fucking maricona. <laughs> <laughs> um, but another big thing, uh, nutrition. I mean, everything that they that they eat is right then, right there. Like, like they pick the tomatoes, or they pick uh, the the coffee, or they pick the fucking the, the beans or the the lettuce and shit. Over here, everything's fucking processed, or in in the city. I mean, let's not talk about like rural versus uh, uh, suburban. Everything in the suburban areas is processed. Now, like by the time, you, obviously there are very many positives of like the rural life. Like you become strong mm -hmm. body. You have all this food that you organically, you know, eating. You're giving back to the Produce. earth. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. But then you know, there's also cons. Like there's also the donkey fucking. Mm. <laughs> I was gonna go with lack of like Amazon Prime, but <laughs> I was gonna go with with no internet. Yeah. But if, you, if if that's really your biggest issue today, I guess we could discuss it. <laughs> no, because um, one thing that I did notice is prevalent in those I, communities. What? <laughs> what? It's prevalent in those communities. No, it, yeah, it, the, it, like, the, the, and I mean the farm and, animal, farm animal. And all this respect to to your grandpa, I don't know. You know, like I'm just talking about in general. When I used to go around this rural areas in venezuela and you would meet people it would okay. sometimes be very very awkward as some people would very casually talk about their donkey fucking experience <laughs> they'd um, invite you and shit you want to hit this <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna go am i gonna go <laughs> this shit right here I got, I got i got one ready to go right quick <laughs> i'll be right back i'll be right back you're not gonna go pussy uh, <laughs> you're not gonna go you're a pussy <laughs> damn no, but, uh, god damn no, but bro it, it, it is, I don't know, like in Venezuela, at least in some rural areas, is, and, and I know in Colombia this is also the case, it's right. very, very, uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's very normal, but it's very common to see it. And, and even women are like, oh yeah, he, he already fucked his first donkey. It's sort of like the, 
the entrance to like a rite of passage. Sexual, yeah, you rite of passage. Wow. And I and I'm just thinking like as a girl, like imagine like you're grabbing that man like and the relationship like the, the the previous relationship was a donkey, right? You're going from donkey to woman. Like, um, <laughs> is there even like is it even like a comparison? Like once you you know like I think Dave Chappelle had a thing where like he said like if you were to fuck a monkey like you wouldn't be into monkeys and women like you you gotta be into one of them because like that shit ain't relatable. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you're into donkeys or women? You know like I just don't and and again this is cultural you know for lack of fucking better words for not saying this is fucking insane but uh <laughs> like i just don't fucking understand it you know like um but you know it is a thing yeah i mean they have the donkey I, show I can't attest to that. in mexico or Tijuana. Oh. Well, that, that's a different thing but that's that's the reverse that's the uh-huh. reverse and it's a lot i mean it's you think those things are real yeah I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, without, without a doubt. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> BJ, if you, if you travel, if you travel deep into into, into the internet, BJ, yeah. I went to BJ Mexico City like and I asked around, like, "Yo, is there anywhere to see this?" And they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about? You fucking gringo? You coming over here? <laughs> what do you think of our culture?" <laughs> you fucking gringo. What up, you asked that way in Mexico City. You, you can't. You can't really ask for that. <laughs> you just have to you just <laughs> come up on it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, nobody's advertising that on the street and shit. Well, my, my cousin's driver, you know, and he's from El Pueblito. Hey, there, there's no, there's, there's no, there's no brochure, there's no pamphlet. <laughs> you don't get that at the airport? <laughs> there's no coupon? There's no coupon. <laughs> I can't say I didn't try. That's not the type, that's the type of shit you just brought into. I mean... <laughs> I do understand yeah. how maybe Mexico City where it might not be like Tijuana where like anything goes right like uh, <laughs> I can see how fear looked like a fucking piece of shit like <laughs> hey dude where is it that you fucked the donkey <laughs> and the guy's like no, I, man I, I know we're not as advanced as the US but what the <laughs> fuck dude <laughs> <laughs> and he probably did it like in like in Spanglish. He's like, I, I want to see burro, you know. Burro. <laughs> and then he's like, what the fuck is wrong with this gringo ass motherfucker? <laughs> the fuck do you think we do here, dog? We do tacos and rancheras, motherfucker. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that narco shit. <laughs> so yeah, I couldn't find it. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, but really though, I mean, I do got a boy. <laughs> 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 He's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, gringo? Uh, come I here. Mean, for three hundred dollars, I mean, we can make, you know, we can make some calls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think you didn't ask the right people. I think in Mexico, for the right amount, <laughs> they'll make any fucking movie happen for you. <laughs> like, well, so right, it's a big the, city. The I don't, I don't think in Mexico world. City, like you said, it's not rural enough where it's not the Wild West where everything yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to be somewhere more rural. Yeah, yeah, for that type of uh, entertainment. The type you, of you action. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go deeper into the into the things, but but yeah, man. One. So 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 then, can we agree that there's like a correlation between um, IQ and donkey fucking? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I I don't think it would be uh, far fetched. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, more than IQ, just education. Uh, or okay, yeah. Let's I think uh, yeah, because... I, I was listening Thomas Sowell who fear knows i think uh but whatever it's like this great economist and just great thinker thomas sowell but he was talking about how how iq is an important factor for success but if you are born in a rural place where you don't have access to opportunities even if you have a really high iq how are you going to put that iq mm-hmm. to use when you're just plowing the land and and no N- nothing to say against no, no, you know like right. that's shit that I really ap- appreciate. I think those are like very uh, valuable jobs, and I wish I was a, a bit more, uh, you know, adequate for the land. You know, instead of being a city bitch. But <laughs> but, but so so he said like IQ is important, but someone with a lower IQ could accomplish a lot more in a place where you have you know access to. To opportunities and resources than someone with a high IQ that never was even able to manifest it. So, 
but yeah, I, 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 you know, not to be fucked up about it, but yeah, there is definitely a correlation between donkey fucking and and your level of um, of education. Uh, education. So, and uh, of like for, formal education and also like access to resources and like schooling and whatever. Like I don't think you go to Harvard. Get out of the like, get out of a third world country. Go to Harvard, accomplish things, and you're still into monkey donkey fucking. Like, well, what if you did it before and now you can't? You can't go back. <laughs> like, imagine if, imagine if you're like a like you know you came from Venezuela or Colombia, right? And you know you came from a, like a rural poor, poor place, and you you fuck donkeys, and then you move to the U.S. and you like you know you're like oh we're the donkeys, but you never you know, fuck it, no donkeys. <laughs> you so, fuck the you women know, here. <laughs> and, and they have to consent so whatever and you do you know that and then he grows up and he Thank becomes God. like a you know he makes an app and this guy is like a super rich guy now multi-millionaire and he's like fuck man now that I got money you know like shit I want to do better. like I want to go do what I always would like the best you know donkey fucking and he lives <laughs> both worlds like he's like no I'm an educated person I've evolved but shit I mean I, I still got my culture like would you defend culture then <laughs> well, he made he made a donkey shit like a donkey app, <laughs> like a donkey locator app. <laughs> you have to check in when it's being used. <laughs> it's available now. It's this donkey's been fucked five times today. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, damn, would it be culture? I don't I mean shit. Um, I I think it would be more like preference, really, at that point in time. Like he, maybe he has fucked a girl and he's like, well, it doesn't feel the same as a, as a donkey. As a I mean, donkey. you know. Did so he start that, feeling bad for the guy? It's like, fuck, man. He becomes guys, one of the letters, I mean, uh, LGBTQ, uh, L M N O P, uh, D, and <laughs> D. <laughs> right? Donkey right. Imagine like if donkey fucking becomes like a thing. Like, don't don't bully him. Okay, he was born like that. <laughs> You're born into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a choice. Not a cho- <laughs> His father <laughs> practically forced him. <laughs> the donkey okay. didn't say no. He falls in love with souls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he sees. He doesn't see any race or you know different type or gender, yeah, gender, <laughs> race or like species. He just sees love. <laughs> He sees the soul. He sees the soul, okay? Do you even know how oh, tight a donkey <laughs> pussy is? <laughs> you don't. You're ignorant. <laughs> you're ignorant. You're ignorant. <laughs> you, you know the donkey has feelings too, okay. you know? <laughs> okay? Have you ever thought of who fucks donkeys? Huh? huh? Do you think they like to get railed too? Maybe the donkey's in love with him. <laughs> okay? Uh. Oh, why can't you accept it? Huh? It's love. It's ignorant. It's ignorant. It's just... So ignorant. It's just you uppity fucking conservative with your fucking Christianity. It's not just about the sex, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the connection that they make. They made a garden together. The donkey plows. He, he puts the things. He, he also plows. The donkey's productivity has gone up. <laughs> They plot, they plot plot together. together okay? it's, it's, it's beautiful. Okay. It's, it's really beautiful. LGBTQD. Donkey fuck. <laughs> Donkey fuck. Dude, dude we're, we're, we're going to get, get so yeah. canceled, bro. <laughs> like, that's it. It's over. I guess we're, sta- we're staying unemployed. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Great. Thanks, Kiko. I, ho- I, ho- I hope you're, I hope you're cool being unemploy- un- unemployable. Now, 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 we're, now we're on that Capitol Hill list, bro. What oh, the fuck? fuck. <sighs> I mean... Hey man, you know, I support you know whatever makes people happy. You know, um, that's true. I'm just saying, who's looking out for the donkeys? You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so I mean, this is kind of I, I guess we could talk about this in the sense of like a traditionalism. You know, like is it a traditional thing or is it like a culture thing or is it really just a a, a, a preference or like a you know like you're you're bored, you got nothing to do. You can't. You don't have money. You're you're young, and you you want to fuck, but you can't fuck a bitch because you're too young. So then you end up doing the donkey. But you, I mean, you gotta you feel know. like it's not right. Like I mean, now that you just said you. it, BJ, kind of makes you know. You give it like, oh, I see how I see how it makes sense. 
I mean, you gave you gave a good right, argument like, for it. You're like, I mean, you're too young for it. <laughs> I mean, jerking off, you know, it's already yeah. getting old. Yeah. And you see that donkey over there, over there. Hold it. A big old stallion. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> a big old stallion looking at you every day. <laughs> you go and you and you clean her up every day, but you can't do anything to her. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, but you, you don't think they feel like eh, this might not be right, but I don't care type, or it's like they don't even put um, right or wrong into it. It's just what it is. Like, do you cover her the first time you do it or some shit? No, I think, or like you're thinking think, about it for a while. Like, oh fuck, dude. No, I think there's I mean, no girls this, inside. Again, this goes with education and shit. These are very simple-minded people that live right. different type of lives, and I don't even think they go as far as thinking they, like they, this is right or wrong. Like this is just they—they they almost they're almost like thinking it instinctively, like, like, like they're animals. <laughs> like yeah, they're, <laughs> they're <laughs> like instinctively. There's a hole. I'm gonna touch it, and then <laughs> yeah, they're born. They make crops, and they're like we fucked and we fucked the donkeys, and then we fucked. <laughs> Welcome the to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we got taco. We got, <laughs> we got, <laughs> we got burritos and uh, yeah. But I, I think this is more of a South. Yeah, American I prefer thing. to I talk about my own country just so that they don't. <laughs> no, but I haven't heard of no. this in uh, in in Dominican. I don't. Know, I haven't heard of anything like that. But in Colombia, yeah, I have, I've heard of it in Cuba. Mm. Yeah. Sad thing is they don't even have donkeys for to fuck now. <laughs> they haven't had yeah. in Cuba. Oh, I heard it with God. pigs though, not do- not donkeys themselves. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Oh fuck! That's why they love that. It's shit like rumors so in much. high school, like oh that guy's uncle back in Cuba did this. Like, hey, and who I said go here, loco chino, loco chino, agarraba puerco, pero eh, eh. No, but um, but this topic about culture, tradition, and 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 how far do we take it? Where is it? like the line to drop certain things and like just grow like i think this is a very important conversation and if mm-hmm. you want to hear a bit on this we're going to be touching on this in the next episode so stay tuned in thank you all for joining us today your boy bj your boy fear any last words you already know uh you already know you can interrupt me otherwise we <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave this close and we're going to end this with a very comfortable topic of donkey fucking. So, you know, keep it real. And and if you are into it, leave a comment. Let us know how this came about. So peace. Take care. Much love.